There was a rumbling of noise on Friday in the Metal Talk offices when the news of a Cats in Space tour came around. This grew to a cacophony mm. with the scale of the project was realised and the number of writers and photographers pointing their hands in the air grew and grew. At the moment, Metal Talk's two Daves, Bonnie and Davis, have been shouting the loudest. So I'm delighted to welcome Cats in Space Axeman Greg Hart to Metal Talk to find out more about this new tour and to selfishly state my case for a spot in the photo pit. Welcome to Metal <laughs> Talk, Greg. How are you doing? I'm oh, very well, thank you very much. Yeah. Good to see you, Steve. Cool. Yeah, nice to have you here. Um, we spoke to Damien Edwards prior to the Atlantis album launch at KK Steel Mill in November 2020. And he said that um, 2020 gave him a different perspective on things, on my career, and on following my heart a bit more. Um, I mean, you and the rest of the band must be over the moon with the fact that he was able to commit to the band. And this kind of strikes me as one of the, the very few COVID-related benefits for anyone in the music industry. Yeah, 100% correct. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, I've known Damien for a long time. So when, even when the band was first put together way back, um, I knew Damien then, but he was just so busy doing stuff and, you know, Paul came along and everything worked out just fine. So, um, yeah, but I've obviously, I've, I've worked with Damien on other stuff besides from that. So I've always kind of, he's always been been there, but I'm I never realised it. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's always been on, not even on the subs bench, he's always been on the touchline, you know, but I never thought he wanted to do original stuff because it's not really his background, you know, mm -hmm. so when COVID came round and we all sat around and I kind of, you know, we needed to get a new singer, um, obviously he was first port of call, cool, um, but I just needed to find out whether he was interested in doing original stuff and whether he would kind of be able to embrace it and by thunder he did you know and he just said well i'm not doing nothing else at the moment none of us are you know in his dry wit so he <laughs> came along he just he just smashed it and i just knew straight away off the very first couple of bars that we were going to make magic you know I, I never realized damien's kind of natural rock voice lent mm -hmm. quite a lot towards dennis de young at sticks mm -hmm. which is heaven for cats in space you know so yeah, it, it it was really, really good. And it's just grown from there. It's just become, I think, you know, no disrespect to anybody else that's kind of been on the journey with us, but this is the sound and the kind of approach and the attitude that I think Cats in Space was always meant to be about, you know, dare I say, a bit more theatrical. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of gone the way that I think the band was always destined to go. Cool. And, 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 Loving it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially with Kickstart the Sun and how, how that's been received. Um, mission accomplished was with honours was how we, we described it, the, the most deliciously audacious audio treat you will experience this year and probably next year too. I mean, uh, yeah. you guys must be happy the way it's been received? We are over the moon, again, over the moon, because it's literally, you know, when you put these things out, you never really know, and we certainly don't expect, oh yeah, we'll just put a new album out and everyone's going to love it, because we know we've got an awful lot of people to win over, you know, millions, um, but the hardcore and the, and the particularly, I've never been, I mean, I've been doing this for like 40 years, and I've never known the press as a collective to get behind a a thing that I've been involved in to the level that they are with this, you know. So I think we're tapping into, I've always said we're tapping into a, a good kind of remit. And dare I say, the people that work in these magazines are of the slightly older generation as well. So I think maybe we all get a bit dewy eyed over the fact that Cats in Space is kind of not just harking back to another time when rock music ruled the world, but also bringing it into the current state of play as well and making it stand up and be counted for the young kids to get into nowadays which let's face it is now crossing three generations yes you know and, and this is all part of the, the the plan of what we're doing this year is the spread of age we have to be very um mindful of the older rock fans that are now you know approaching you know 60 plus years old and we go back to the early 80s. We went to Hammersmith and all stood up there and then de denim jackets and 
going berserk for eight hours, you know, we've all got older, but we've all got the same passion for the music, but we just have to be a bit more mindful of how we're able to do it, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah so Kickstarters, I think, tapped into a lot more people than the previous albums. And the double album that it was, I think, also was a real, like, oh, my God, why are they attempting such a ridiculous thing, you know? <laughs> And we thought, well, if anybody's going to do it, Cats in Space is going to do it. We've never shied away from doing the ridiculous. Or, you know, not ridiculous as in rubbish, but ridiculous as in it's quite a crazy thing to do in, in the music business and the, the kind of situation that it's in, especially post-COVID. So, but, yep. Well, if you've got good songs and you don't want to cull it down to a single album, all we'd have ended up doing was putting the other songs on the next album and made out we'd just written them. And I don't yeah. work like that. I believe in being very, very truthful and honest up front. I said, we wrote these amount of songs and they're all going out now. I don't want to revisit them in three years' time and make out they're new, you know? So yeah. Kickstart the Sun is very much of of last year and it's still very much going to be part of this year with the mm-hmm. tour. Um, so we give it a really good run. Yeah, one of the things that's really interesting, I mean, I don't kind of share stats about Metal Talk and things like that, but with uh, Kickstart the Sun, obviously it's been a yeah, few months now, but uh, month on month on month, yeah, we seem to have there's several days each month where um, Liz's review picks up something like six, 800, sometimes over a 1,000 reads, yeah, on a single day. And it, it's, wow. you know, it, it, it's, yeah, it's like four or five times a month, yeah. Um, and... Yeah, so it's just like something's happening somewhere in the world, yeah, and someone yeah. someone's googling it, you know, that they find it, and it's just these massive people always seem to find it at a similar time. Yeah? Well, this is it. I mean, you, you're right. I mean, this is the this is the dilemma that every band faces: is that you put your album out, and ten minutes later, it's engulfed by a thousand other albums because there's no quality yep. control in the world. You know, yep. we was only speaking about this earlier today. There used to be a time when if you got a record deal, it's because you kind of merited a record deal and your album would go out and there was a limited amount of bands that had record deals. Mm-hmm. There wasn't the cottage industry that there is now. Cottage industry is great for a band like Cats in Space because it works for us to a point, I'm not saying it's the ultimate thing, but it does work for us, but it doesn't have any quality control over it. So mm-hmm. the fact that our album keeps getting little tickles mm-hmm. shows that it's good, yep. but also... You know, it, it's a you've got to keep keep forcing the issue with people because so many miss it because of the amount of stuff that's out there. So it's a constant battle to give your album the attention it deserves. Again, it's why we're doing Kickstart Part Two this year. Yep. is because we've realised that three or four months to do a campaign ain't going to work anymore. So as long as you've got something valid to keep the album alive with, i.e., another tour that's different. Mm-hmm that album should have further legs than it would have had, had it just had the one tour cycle, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why we're doing it as well, because we deserve the album to keep getting out there. We get stuff on the website and we get stuff on YouTube. And, you know, again, little tickles. But our friends in America that are promoting us at Sea Tranquility, they get a massive reach mm-hmm. and we get a kickback off of that. So it's just, it's little crumbs in a very big kind of, pudding if you like but yeah. you've got to keep in the pudding yeah absolutely i mean i think it's i, I think it should be really positive yeah i mean there are yeah. um you, you know it, it's like oh god there it goes yeah cats in space is trending again on a website you know and it, it, it just it, it, it's a pattern it just keeps just keeps going keeps going keeps going you don't see that very often you know wow um, it's good to know uh, a million miles yeah it's a wonderful song with a fantastic video um that's just a, an amazing piece of art in itself. Yeah, can you can you talk about how you had the how you guys had the concept for the film? Um, well, James Heron, our video man, Mad James, as we call him, he came on board to do the Christmas single a couple of years ago. Um, I was introduced to him by a really good friend of mine called Mick White, who's also out there doing well. Good old Mick, you know, big shout out to my buddy there. Um, and he said, I've got this guy called James who talks more than you do. I went. Uh-huh. No, seriously, mate. He, he, we call it twenty-eight to one ratio because he will say twenty-eight words to <laughs> my one, let alone anybody else's. But he's just a brilliant filmmaker. He's got a good background that you know. I'm sure you know he'll talk about one day. But he comes from the industry, um, and he just started making these really cool videos that look like a million quid. And 
he'd never heard of us, you know, to his horror. And as soon as he did, he was like, oh my God, this band, why have I not heard of this band? And he just, he's kind of stuck himself to us and said, I want to do all your videos forever. And I went, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> so he he came up with Poke the Witch. That was his concept. Right. Um, he, t- Teenage Millionaires, he did. Um, and then Million Miles was his tour de force because he loves that song on, more than any on the, on the album, apart from Bootleg Bandoleros. Um, and he just said, I really want to run with this one. Can you lead me with it? I went, if you can do it. And when he was telling me how he's going to do it, I said, James, we, you don't have budgets for these things. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. This was a like, hundred grand video 10 mm-hmm. years ago. You know? yeah. And he went, no, I'm, I've worked it out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It took him three weeks to edit. Because wow. people, they look at it and go, oh, wow, they're in a spaceship. Oh, look, there comes Julie singing with Damon. Oh, look, we're on a TV screen. That takes enormous amounts of time mm-hmm. to make rights. And he ran with it. And, um, yeah, he's kind of, he's become a big cog in the wheel now. In fact, he's very, very heavily involved with the tour. He's got a lot of involvement with this tour that we're, we're undertaking. So, yeah, good old Jim. And thanks to Mick, um, we've got another madman in the team. <laughs> I mean, speaking of the tour, I mean, uh, you know, Million Miles features Julie Maggie, also known as the Duchess, yeah, who's joining for these new live shows along with Carly Louise, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, already, you know, just with the, the addition of those two, it sounds something that's going to be very special. It is. I mean, we're, we're taking more cats on the road with us, you know, which is going to be really good fun. I mean, we've worked with Julie. I mean, I've not actually worked with Carly, but obviously they both did the Thunder tour and mm-hmm. they were amazing. You know, Pete Russell, that sound guy, is also Thunder sound guy. And he just said, it's, Thunder went up a level as well, which takes some doing, but he feels that they did. And I went along to see the show and I thought they absolutely smashed it. And I, obviously knowing Julie as I do, and she she's known Damien for Donkey's years, she came and sang with us and did the album. And I just thought, I've always wanted to make the show not using meatloaf as an analogy as such, mm-hmm. but that kind of style show where you've got yep. more than just the band, mm-hmm. you've got more to hear, more to look at, you know, a bit more dynamic. And we use a lot of girl backing vocals on the last two albums in particular, and we need to get it live, you know, so we said, let's make the show bigger. You know, if we make it bigger, hopefully more people will come to see it, you know, so it's a, uh, yeah, it's very, very exciting. So we're, we're trying to plan a, a show that is much more than just, you know, we can't go into rock venues like a lot of bands. We, you know, we've done it. We've done it for four or five years now. And as good as the venues are and as lovely as the, the, the people that run it are, and we've had some great times and great responses, we're too hemmed in. We Our, our songs are just too massive to project on a smaller stage, unfortunately. Yep. And although the, the million dollar question is, yeah, but of course you can go and do it at Hampshire Podium, but can you sell that many tickets? And the answer is no. So we're trying to find a way into a theatre show mm-hmm. by doing these theatres, um, which we've done some before and they work out really well. And we just, we're just going for it. We're just going, let's do the show as best as we can, how people think Cats in Space should do it. Because from day one, we was always told your bands sound like ELO. They should be doing Wembley Arena with mm-hmm. a spaceship. But the trouble yep. is you ain't got the people to pay for that. Yep. They're your problem. And it's always been our problem. The people kind of expect us to do something a bit lavish. Mm-hmm. And we've gone out and done these club dates and done really well, but it's just not, it's not showing the band off, unfortunately, to the best of its capabilities. So we're just literally busting everything to do this i mean it is literally we're going around with the begging bowl for this because if it works i think it's the future right okay if it doesn't work i'll be coming and draw ass for a cup of tea (laughs) (laughs) so it's a massive massive risk but we feel everything's lined up to this everything you know kickstart the sun was always going to be about we need to do it if we're going to do it we'll do it now and uh we just need as many people around the country to support it as possible and buy tickets. And I do believe it is the future for the band, without question. I mean, it's for me, I, it, it seems really exciting, actually. I mean, obviously, Kickstart the Sun double album, loads of songs on there, you know, 
um you know you're planning this this kind of more extravagant live production now with a bigger cats in space team are you able to give us any small clues about visually what we might see um well the the plan is i mean obviously we're still sketching this out at this stage but we, we have got some pretty big plans obviously we, we want the two girls on board and they're going to be adding to the the sound because we don't use any backing tracks mm -hmm. we're not succumbing to that which we could easily do a, a band like us could easily succumb to backing tracks because it's so massive but all we use are incidental sound effects, little intros to songs, mm -hmm. which are played on the keyboard or whatever, but we don't use track yeah. as so many do. So we just, to prove even further that we're not going to do that, we'll just bring in two more people to help sing, make it even bigger. And we do pretty well with the vocals as it is. You know? So that's one thing. It's going to be a two set show and the first set will be Kickstart Sun, not in its entirety, because of the way that it runs and the timings of it, with it, but it is going to be focused entirely on kickstart the sun, and then the second set will be what I call the greatest hits, if you like, of Captain right. Space. It'll be, you know, your songs from Scarecrow and Narnia and the first album and Atlantis, and ending up with Great Story Never Told and all the kind of usual stuff that we've done up till now. So it's a two sets, visually a little bit different. And the plan is to bring in some some presentation ideas. Right. Um, but we don't know what that's going to be at this stage. We're working on that. But the plan will be to have more than just lights. That's that's the plan. But we can't okay. we can't say no more than that at the minute because we don't know what it's going to be yet. James is doing that. So um right. yeah. But what what it will be at the very, very least is one hell of a good two hour show and it's gonna be it's going to be brilliant. It really is. I mean, I mean, Kickstart the Sun as an album, yeah, is um, is a really uh, cool way to um, present uh, one of the sets. Yeah, I mean, if you take the track on the album, yeah, it appears in three places, doesn't it? Yeah, right mm -hmm. at the start, there's a reprise or reprise right at the end, and yeah. then there's the main track in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's a that's a big clue how you're going to frame that that, that first part of the set then. yes it is yeah you're absolutely right that is the top middle and bottom of the mm -hmm. of the set you know we're all the hot spots in the middle so it's we're jiggling the set a little bit um it's a it's there's a there's a couple of songs that we won't won't be doing but we're pretty much doing everything mm -hmm. um and obviously bootleg bandoleros is the big boy at the end which we've never even attempted i've run through it on acoustic guitar here and i'm nervous about that. <laughs> right. our band. It, it's by far the, the hugest song that we're, we're ever likely to tackle and if we we've said if we can't do it we will we, we will do it we're not, not going to do it but we're not going to cheat you know there'll be a few little um sound effects but the idea is we're going to smash that song out live like we do with the greatest story never told. People yep. said you'd never play that live, and that yep. is probably our biggest song live. So poor Damien's got one hell of a show. To <laughs> There's a lot of vocals, but yeah, it's it's going to be good. And the second set's going to be great as well because we're going to put a couple of surprises in there as well. So it's yeah, it's going to be big. Cool. I mean, it, it already sounds like a, an epic sensory evening. Um, you, you know, you mentioned about kind of seeing the the, the music presented live, almost like a, a, a theatre show, yeah? And so, you know, now this is really the time for you, yeah, to kind mm. of present the show as you, as you see it in your head. I think it sounds quite exciting, actually. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, some people go, oh, theatre show, theatre, they get a bit snooty, a bit jazz hands. It's like people need to wise up. They, they need to understand that, our, a lot of our audience, I mean, we see them coming in, but not all of them run for the barriers. They sub yep. they run for the seats at the side. Mm -hmm. You know, bless them. You know, these, these people are 60, 65 years old, and some have got sticks, and some have got ill health, but they still come out to see the show. They need a seat. And then if you give them a seat in a the theatre, they're going to have a much nicer time, mm -hmm. and they can stand up in their seat. They can sit yep. down in their seat. They can go yep. into the aisle and have a dance, and the, mm -hmm. the ushers can tell them to go back and sit down. They buy a seat, do what they want with it. And we found on the theatre shows that we have done, it works perfectly. Because what you don't do is exhaust the audience. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is we go on in a club at nine o'clock. 
the doors are at 6 30 they all yeah. come in at 6 30 yeah not being funny they're tired by nine o'clock already mm -hmm. you know yeah. because it's a, it's a long night for people of our age you know mm -hmm. so by the time we go on and do an hour and 45 they're knackered mm -hmm. you know and and i think they're kind of looking around to think oh i'm sitting down for a bit and i say that through my own experience of seeing a band recently well, I just looked around at the audience, of which there was a lot of people that I could have some space reading for in there, and they were tired. You know, they were, mm -hmm. and I saw the the level of um, uh, like participation, if you like, drop yep. the, yep. because they because they don't they're bored or they don't want they're just bloody tired. Mm -hmm. no, it's like getting on to court past ten, and and it does. Unfortunately, we've got to understand those things and be respectful of it. And a theatre show, it starts earlier, you mm -hmm. get a break in the middle, you can get yep. a drink, you can park your car, you'll be out there by half past ten at the latest, and you haven't got to worry about, you know, going over midnight and stuff like that. It just seems to fit our age remit, dare mm -hmm. I say it, and it, it's the way forward, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, uh, is it difficult to get a tour together these days? Are there still challenges yeah. kind of post-COVID? It's really tough. I mean, that's why our tour is running the way it is. It's in several pieces because we just couldn't get all the dates we wanted fitted into one area. We couldn't even get all the dates that we wanted full stop. Yeah. So uh, originally, I mean, uh, fair play to us for doing it, but we actually had a discussion late last year and said, look, if we have to stick at six or seven shows, that's going to be it. Mm -hmm. And then we got to 10 and I thought, what? Well, 10's not too shabby and we managed to get it up to 16 which is phenomenal mm -hmm. you know because it is still rolling over so we decided we'll do no more than 16 we've tried to get it as spread as we can we haven't hit places like yorkshire unfortunately so we're going to get stick for that yep. but what we're saying is bear with us you know maybe you can travel to see us like we're traveling 200 miles to see you you know yep. maybe we've yep. got a bit of back scratching it if you don't travel, these gigs won't happen, and then you really will have something to moan about, you know. But if it works, we will extend next year or whenever the next tour will be, because we know that that theatre remit works for us. And there are a lot of theatres around the UK. I mean, I could probably name you sixty yep. that people play. You know, from Ross is doing the same circuit, for instance, mm -hmm. and he's going around everywhere. There are a lot of really cool theatres mm -hmm. for people to go to, but you've got to get there slowly and steady and make sure the ones that you got work first and then yep. build on it. Um, hence, why, again, I think it's a really good future for mm -hmm. the way we're doing things because it, it, there's a lot of scope there. So, yeah, I think all the things done, we've got a good looking tour that we're really pleased with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've, so, you know, sometimes it's uh, it, it's cool to sit down and what what watch bands play, and um, you know, I've seen you several times. Yeah, it's always an exciting evening. Um, but this kind of concept is quite mind blowing, actually. How you're feeling nervous, excited, impatient? <laughs> All of those are very, very nervous, very, very nervous, because it is a huge thing. I mean, I can't. I'm not. You know, we're not doing gloom because we're not like that, but it is a huge thing. We, we've we've looked at the way that we've worked from 2015 to where we are now. We've done some huge gigs of Thunder and Status mm -hmm. Quo and Deep Purple and Hyde Park. We've done the biggest gigs that you can do in this country. And then the minute we go back to our own little shows, it's like, mm -hmm. it goes right back down. And we've, we've gone from like this 100-foot stage to a 10-foot stage. Yeah. I mean, not, again, I'm not dissing these places because they're, they're the lifeblood, but we can't project. So we we said we've got to try and do something that shows cats in space for the best it can be. And we said, yeah, but it's madness to try this. I went, well, let's just go for it. So we yep. are nervous. We're, we're very, very excited about it. And as long as it gets nearer and we see the tickets start selling and people start getting excited about it, it's going to be good. I mean, we're we're not holding back here. We're we're really going to make this the best thing that any of us have ever done, because if it works, it's the future. Nice. Yes, yeah. and I, I think it will be. I think, you know, we're not expecting full houses. We're not expecting to sell out theatres in the first time. I mean, that doesn't happen. Yep. But if you can put decent attendances in, you know, and it will be next time, then you've got a good 
you know benchmark for moving on so you know we've done the stables in Milton Keynes and we was you know we had 350 in there out of a potential 400 Mm -hmm. the atmosphere is a different level Mm -hmm. you know it was brilliant and that is cats in space that is where you see the real cats in space you know so that's that's why we want to do this have you done any uh, any rehearsals with the girls yet? How does that sound? Um, yeah, it's it's going to sound amazing because obviously I've heard them already, but we haven't actually rehearsed as such. But I'll be planning very soon to get together with them and start running through all the the harmonies and where we're going to do bits and bobs and where they're going to jump up and down and go nuts. So yeah, they're also we're going to be talking about their uh, what they're going to look like as well. All right, okay. So, cool. Yeah, <laughs> I can promise you that's going to be a bit good. Right, yeah, I can imagine. They're, can imagine. They're, they're up for a challenge, these girls. So, uh, yeah, it's going to look good. They won't be coming out in black, put it that way. Right, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So, look, the first show is uh, on 20th of July in Brackville. The air July is not that far away. That's uh, <laughs> that's going to be here before you know it. Um, yeah. yeah, you've got three in July, November and December, with September being a seven-date month. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cats in Space website, is that a good place for people to buy tickets who are not reading this article on Metal Talk tomorrow? Yeah, we're, all, the, the, all the dates will be going up. We've had a, a few gremlins and glitches today, unfortunately, which has meant some of the, the shows haven't haven't got the right ticket links yet. So we will be going on the website very, very soon, but we will be launching a video trailer uh-huh. Um, on Facebook as well. So when you see that video trailer go up, then it's all systems go. But yeah, we're still frantically trying to amend a few things, unfortunately, which these things happen, you know, it's this, it's the nature of the beast. So it won't be a problem, but it's just taken us a tad longer than anticipated. So hopefully by Wednesday, we will have everything in place, but there will be a video trailer going up that's, uh, We'll show you a few bits and bobs. We won't show you what we're doing on stage, but it's a good video trailer. All right, cool, cool. We look forward to that. Um, so, yeah. look, Greg, I, I, I wish you all the best. Uh, this deserves to be massive. Um, I wish you all the best in luck and in the world. And uh, we'll definitely see you out Good on thing. the road. Yep, thanks for your time. Please do. Yeah, and thanks to all you guys for supporting us. And, um, yeah, we'll be uh, updating you as we go with more reveals because I'm sure there's more things to come yet about this tour that we'll we'll say, but... I just don't want to take fate until we get it nailed, but it's going to be good. So get out there and buy a ticket. Awesome. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers, Greg. Thank you very much. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, mate.